We're now at the closing session. Um, and I'd like to kindly invite to the stage Mr. Kabali Sarene, Senior Principal in Charge of ICT Private Sector Development. Good evening, uh, CEO, Chair of Afrinic, uh, Vice President of ICANN, CEOs of uh, Wakren, Untunet, and ASREN, Head of uh, Information Society, Director of Planning uh, Knowledge Society and in UNESCO, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. And uh, my name is Rene, as they said, I'm the Director General in the Ministry of ICT. I'm here representing the Minister who couldn't attend uh, the, the closing uh, ceremony because of conflicting agendas. As you know, there are so many events uh, uh, going on in Kigali. When they told me to come here, I, I was like, okay, I suck, I googled, and most of the newspapers and social medias that talk about this this dialogue, I was like, wow. I was talking with Dr. Bekele, I was like, why is uh, all the social medias and everybody talking about this dialogue? Um, I have heard that you had two wonderful two days meeting, and I have heard that more than 20, uh, 150 participants uh, from more than 24 countries of Africa and seven of outside Africa is so amazing. I've seen people from West Africa. So you're here, right? And well, and I wanted to thank the people who made uh, long trips from all over the world uh, coming to ISOC uh, dialogue. And I have heard that you also discussed about the use of internet uh, and in education. Uh, we have had a lot of things uh, happened in Rwanda in the last uh, few years, and the use of internet has been one of the main goals in, in Rwanda, in all over the, the country. As you might know, we have uh, 4G uh, uh, and the backbone fiber optics all over the country. And last week, we also had uh, um, MOU with uh, some people who are going to connect more than one million uh, households and offices. Um, about education in Rwanda, like later, like uh, today in the in the morning, I was uh, opening. Um, uh, one of the innovation hubs uh, in Kigali uh, College of Education. We have so many education hubs in Kigali, and those innovation hubs will host young and talented uh, Rwandese, and they will turn their ideas into businesses. It is happening, and it's not happening. Uh, for record, one of the young innovators who came from that innovation hubs had an app and it turned into business and one of the Japan, biggest Japanese companies bought uh, that app for more than a lot of uh, a lot of money millions of dollars um, talking about education again in Rwanda we had we start from the bottom we start with kids we had this program called one laptop per child whereby we dispatch laptops to secondary schools and primary schools. And we have laptops that are made in Rwanda, and we dispatch uh, all those laptops to students from primary school and nursery schools. Uh, we had smart classrooms. Uh, we have um, we have RAB, Rwanda Education Board, that is uh, having contents, you can find them online. So these are some of the, uh, the policies and the things we have done in education. 
uh, that will of course uh, impact all other sectors uh, we have a lot of things we have the e-commerce I have heard in the wrap-up sessions that you talk about the e-commerce uh, we have the Rwanda online that is uh, having more than 150 services if I want a land title I don't need to go to the district to get that paper I just order online I pay online then I get my my run my my run title so these are all the processes and uh, innovations and all the other things that we are doing in in Rwanda um, the ministry and we is very happy to host you and I'm very happy that ISOC uh, chose Rwanda to host uh, this uh, very successful dialogue and uh, I hope to see you again and you might stay because we have a lot of uh, uh, meetings. I hope to see you tomorrow in the Transform Africa and we hope to see you again uh, soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kabanisa. And I would like to call on our Senior Director of Global Engagement the Internet Society, Ms. Joyce Donye, to come here and give us her closing speech. Thank you. Sorry, I need to do some technical assistance before I can... This one? Just blank? So I'm going to unplug for one second. <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure uh, to have you here for the past two days, and it's been uh, it's been very interesting. I think um, the fact that uh, we actually sat and talked and listened and learned from each other was very enriching. At least I speak from my own perspective. I hope you all, you all shared uh, the same feeling. Um, as I uh, as I mentioned in. Um, in my opening um, discussion is that I think we confirm that connectivity for the sake of connectivity is not the only thing. I think we confirm that connectivity needs to be for something. We had extensive presentations and discussions about internet for education, internet for e-commerce, internet for business, for digital economy. Um, and I think we, um, we also confirm that one organization by itself cannot make things happen. Um, and I'm very pleased that um, we had the opportunity, and I, I had the opportunity to receive some feedback from uh, some of you last night, who said that it was, um, in some cases, the first time that they had a variety of actors sitting around one table talking about the same issue. Having people from government, having people from private sector, having people from civil society, and all having a conversation to see what um, the next big thing could be. Now, I'm not going to do a wrap-up of a wrap-up of a wrap-up. I think uh, I think we're there. Um, the, the other thing I, uh, I mentioned um, uh, yesterday was that uh, we're all here because we care about the internet. We wouldn't be here. But uh, we're all here because we care about people and the people that use the internet. So I wanted to take um, the opportunity here in uh, my closing remarks to talk a little bit more about the people. And so I'm going to take you on a, on a little journey of uh, some of some projects that um, our community has been uh, doing or has done uh, or is doing in some cases and um, uh, I'm going to show to you that each one of you in this room make a difference um, and I'm going to and I'll be able to you know, highlight all of you and all of your work because you, I'm sure you all do amazing things. Um, I just had to choose the ones I had pictures of, right? So that was the, <laughs> that was the limitation. So this is, um, guess who? Are you sitting on the front row? Tato, come on. <laughs> so this is Tato Mfikwe. Um, and uh, Soweto, Soweto uh, Wireless User Group. This young man here has um, is CEO of the organization. He's running the organization. Please sit down if you want to. I don't want to. <laughs> 
I just want people to recognize you. Um, they actually built uh, internet infrastructure and that um, they actually brought it uh, to service locations in Soweto. Uh, they connected over a thousand people, right, more or less. Uh, ten local businesses, we keep it more even me now, probably. Going. Oh, please, yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, what we've done, we've set up infrastructure in Soweto. Uh, the main goal is to create public hotspots for the communities to connect in public spaces. So in order to sustain the networks, we, the network, we've connected businesses and households. So we're just continuing to grow the network and currently we've got one main high site and three additional remote high sites. Thank you, Tati. So I'm going to continue showing some uh, pictures. So this is some of the work they've been doing. They've also um, obviously uh, you know, connected the place, but also trained some people. This is another project uh, in South Africa, which is a Zenzeleni community network. Um, and also from South Africa, Internet Society South Africa Gauteng chapter, um, where um, they basically you know, are building, still building the community network to connect um, some of the villages in uh, Mankosi, uh, in uh, the Eastern Cape. Um, I'm going to move on. There's another gentleman. Where are you hiding? Simba, where are you? There you are. Um, Simba is uh, together with Solomon Kembo, is with uh, Internet Society uh, Zimbabwe chapter. Um, they established an uh, IoT makerspace. And um, what um, they did is that in selected Zimbabwean schools, they, uh, they really wanted to inspire and equip the local students with IoT skills and resources. And so the pilot project started at St. Peter's in Bara High School in the suburb of Arare uh, with uh, 20 enthusiastic pupils. And uh, I, I don't have the, the latest picture, but they just uh, graduated from their very first cycle, right? I saw that they all were jumping up and down with their diplomas. So congratulations for all the work you're doing. Um, this, uh, we're moving to the west now, we're moving to Senegal, uh, where we have Bamba, uh, sitting next to Alex Corentin, who some of you uh, may know as well. Uh, and uh, they were on their way to, I'm going to mispronounce the name, I'm sure, Tie, Tie Yetu, right? Uh, uh, Tie uh, I know it. Thank you. Um, and it's, uh, it's a village in uh, the northwest of Senegal, which is about uh, 27 kilometers from the closest town. And uh, they, um, they have about 230 students that go to primary school there. They have, uh, in many cases, never been on the internet, never used the internet. And so they, uh, they are now actually um, Connecting, and they have connected already one of the one of the schools, if I'm not mistaken, right? Which is this picture, uh, or at least one of them. So um, they uh, they are continuing the work there as well to train some of the teachers on how to use the internet and how to work with the students uh, in the classrooms. Moving to don't hide. Uh, where where is she? Where is she? <laughs> Lilian. <laughs> So uh, Lilian Naluoga from the uh, Uganda chapter, uh, they're currently working on, uh, they've done some other projects in the past on, uh, uh, for children as well, digital literacy program for, uh, for children, but they're currently working on um, a Wikipedia program, so um, where's, hi, there you are. Um, and they work together with uh, some of the people from the Red Cross as well. So they are um, generating about 300 translated articles on uh, Wikipedia and uh, translating it to Luganda. Uh, it's still ongoing, uh, so uh, you'll hear more about this soon. And then um, I wanted to leave you with uh, not only um, not only pictures, but also some voices. And I wanted, since we talked about education and what it means for the next generation, looking into the future, what the internet can mean for kids, I just wanted to share this one minute. There is no sound.
make my own things. It's to train my brain. No, the world is changing. So, what can I do? Change with it. I want to do something. I want to invest something that can help change. Uh, we are at the end of our meeting. Yeah, I'm sure you're uh, happy for this achievement. Uh, so you only have uh, to be patient for a few minutes and then we'll be done. And uh, I assure you that I don't have uh, a very long presentation. It will be just to summarize uh, our achievement in the last two days. So uh, I will start with giving you a few information about our meeting. Uh, we had uh, 161 participants who came to this meeting. It doesn't mean that everybody is here from beginning to the end, uh, but that is much higher than what we expected. We, uh, it was, uh, as you know, uh, everybody had to have an invitation it was not an open meeting, and our target was 50, so it was much higher. Uh, so uh, to be gender sensitive, I have to mention that we had, uh, and we didn't have uh, as many women as we would have wished because we had only 29 compared to uh, 132 men. So we have to change that for the next one. 
uh, the local participants, 68. So it shows that uh, we have uh, quite a large number of uh, international participants. Uh, the countries represented, we had 24 African countries. Uh, let me know if your uh, country does not appear here. Uh, from outside Africa, we have we had seven uh, countries represented. Uh, very interesting. Interestingly, we had uh, quite a large number of participants online. We had uh, more than a thousand, a thousand two hundred sixty-six people following this meeting uh, remotely. So uh, these are unique views. Uh, as you have heard from uh, the director of ICT of the ministry, uh, there was a lot of press coverage. Uh, we had 48 journalists who came here. Uh, in the morning yesterday, we thought we had an invasion because there were so many of them. Uh, so that was a great success and uh, they reported uh, about it extensively and our presence on social media was also uh, considerable. Uh, and uh, we had also 20 uh, organizations represented. And I'm probably not, uh, we have, uh, I think this is underestimated because uh, some people may have not indicated their organization. I'm not going to go into another wrap up, uh, but my very quick summary uh, of uh, the meeting, uh, I heard that uh, we can't reach the SDG goals. In fact, it's not only education, but all the SDG goals if we attack the problem the old way. Uh, it was interesting to hear from the director of uh, UNESCO that even at the fastest development rate in the world, almost all countries will not reach their goals by the end of the century, let alone by 2030. So we are obliged to find transformative solutions if we are really serious about our SDG goals. And we have also heard that the internet can bring transformative changes in almost all SDGs. And we have heard that there are real opportunities. I remember a few years back, we were talking about, you know, internet applications in Africa as, you know, science fiction, as something that might happen someday. Today, it's no more that the case. We see that there are startups that have been able to generate millions of the users that have, you know, capitals of, uh, you know, uh, hundred million dollars or something, which is considerable. So it is real, but it is not guaranteed that it's going to be an easy walk. We have seen in some countries that things are rough that expectations are not met, that companies are closing, and that from ILO we heard that even though there are good things about the internet, there are, are things that might come. And the difference from the rest of the world is that we know it in advance. We have to experience it to know some of the bad consequences. We know it, we don't have to go through that. We can anticipate and uh, prepare for those things. And uh, being part of the internet economy, Mokhtar said, is a question of life and death. So it's not something that we say, well, okay, it's good. We can do that or we cannot do that. All our economies will depend on that. We will have, and uh, Michael also told us, when we call about internet economy, it's not just that internet sector. It's the whole economy. So we have really to adopt it. We don't have an option. And African countries might miss this revolution unless they have a vision 
strategy and implement their strategies. And I would like to finish by saying that, to finish my summary, and then I have seven, a few more slides, by saying that Rwanda showed us that with a great vision, a good strategy, and a good implementation, we can do things that nobody would imagine. I would repeat it again a few years back when Rwanda had that vision, Everybody was laughing. Everybody was saying, well, this small country in East Africa is trying to do that. Today, no more, nobody is laughing. So I hope that we take this lesson. We say, we see that no vision is too much as long as we work towards it. So I hope that we will leave this room and have visions we work for a strategy and for its implementation. Before finishing, I would like to thank many organizations with the risk of forgetting <laughs> some that I did yesterday. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank, of course, the Ministry of uh, ICT in Rwanda and uh, more especially uh, the minister who has been with us yesterday, but all along this journey, UNESCO, UNECA, African Union Commission, AFREN, WACREN, UbuntuNet, ATHREN, AFRINIC, ICANN, ECOWAS, ECOWAS Commissioner, I would like to thank him, especially because uh, he has been here all the time, and I know that he had a, a very busy schedule. Uh, many representatives from African uh, universities, uh, I'm not going to mention in order not to uh, forget some, but uh, we are really honored by their presence. And of course the speakers and the moderators who have spent a lot of time in preparing their presentations uh, and I'm sure you agree with me that we had very interesting presentations that uh, really mattered a lot. And of course the participants. And uh, unlike many other meetings, I don't think you can say that you have been just listening. Every single person has given his input or her input. Uh, the roundtable discussions were very lively. Uh, and very quickly you adopted the format we were afraid that uh, you know uh, you wouldn't be able to, uh, to you know to sink to that model very quickly but you are very quick so i think everybody here participated to the success of this meeting i would like also to thank some of my colleagues and uh, our advisors uh, first uh, alice from the isoc board uh, the ISOC staff uh, who have been working relentlessly for uh, several months. Uh, I would like to highlight Marsema. Uh, <laughs> she was the woman behind the logistics. Uh, and uh, when I say logistics, it requires you to get up uh, you know, at midnight uh, and, uh, you know, do a lot of things. And we don't have a big logistics department. Logistics is Marsema. And that is a big achievement. Uh, Betel, who is in charge of communications, uh, who brought... <laughs> Kevin, who was silently doing all the streaming, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, you know who brought the 1,200 participants in this room. Victor, who is in charge of the chapter, maybe you can get up and we can go quickly. Tuki, Al. And of course, Joyce, 
Constance, who, is, who has been able, who had left now, unfortunately, and Ted at the back. And of course, I have to thank our consultants, uh, Lishan at the back, who wrote the, uh, you know, who did the paper, the research on uh, internet and education in Africa that we have launched. And I am sure you will agree with me, and I hope that each and every of you will take a copy of the report. And if you don't, you read it online. It's a very good report that I'm sure uh, you'll appreciate. Uh, and it was a very good input for this meeting, so thank you. Uh, Michael, who, who is working on the internet economy a report and uh, who is also, uh, I have seen the draft, so I can testify a very good report that will come out in June, hopefully, uh, and uh, I think it was also a very good input for this meeting. So thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, so we had also a photographer you have seen uh, everywhere, uh, Nayani, who uh, is not here right now, uh, and Astrida is uh, our rapporteur. Uh, is she around? Yes. Uh, thank you, Astrida. And we will make sure that we take this report uh, we will work with Veren Guy uh, on uh, a very nice report and we will make sure that you have it. So make sure that you have your email address uh, with us. Uh, as you might know, we have invited uh, uh, some chapter representatives here uh, and uh, I, I will mention some, uh, well, their countries, Rwanda, Togo, Cameroon, Chad, Gambia, Senegal, Uganda, South Africa, uh, uh, Mali, Zimbabwe, Burkina Faso, and Kenya. I would like to ask them to rise. <laughs> Can I? Did I? Did I? Did I oh, okay. I, I, okay. Sorry, uh, I forgot Ghana, but he's, it is there. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, we need uh, people outside the organization uh, to help us as well. So I would like to recognize the interpreters. It is important that we can communicate across languages, and this wouldn't have been possible without the interpreters. So a big thank you to the interpreters. And of course the hotel, I'm sure you agree with me that it was a very nice hotel, uh, very good food, uh, and uh, I don't know, Marcema will tell them that we are very happy. And uh, finally we had also other photographers uh, from um, uh, other than Nayani, uh, so th thank you also for all the photographers uh, here. Uh, I hope that I didn't forget anyone, Marcema Betel, did I forget anyone? Okay, I hope I'm right this time. Thank you very much. To leave you, I will show you a few pictures that show how we have passed these two days. So there were serious sessions like this one. The lounge with the minister, less serious this one, this time. And then you have been working very hard as you can see here and here and here you are enjoying while working you are very attentive but you had some easy time as well and then finally we were all together in a team so thank you very much